Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent today than it was yesterday, one day closer to looking into our Savior's face, our groom. Um, I want to try to make this quick, famous last words, right? Um, I am going to hop on tonight and share something, um, continue with Catholicism, something I wrote in my first book about um, Catholicism because I did get a lot of responses about um, Catholic and it is not to insult or, you know, to put Catholicism, a person who is labels themselves as Catholic down. Um, it is for that person who chooses to call themselves Catholic to be certain that you are saved for that great and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because that moment is happening in the twinkling of an eye. So um, that is not my intention to ever insult or put down any Catholic. I was Catholic for half of my life prior to coming back to the Lord. Um, I got born again at 11, but I had a lot of confusion in my life because of my Catholic upbringing and going to Catholic school and Jesus Christ is faithful and he keeps his promises so the truth will set us free when we seek the truth so when we feel sometimes that the truth threatens us or we feel threatened by what somebody is saying um, take a closer look at it look in the word don't trust my word I'm not a pastor I'm not a teacher please look into the word of God the Word of God is the inspirational Word of God. It is there to teach us, to guide us, to direct us. That is God's inspired Word. Okay, so I will um, share something tonight from from my first book, Behold, I Stand at the Door and Knock, while I'm at work tonight on my lunch break. But I wanted to come on here quickly um, and talk a minute about the Asbury Revival, okay? I am hearing so much about this Asbury Revival in Kentucky. It's a Methodist University, okay? Um, it's been going on almost two weeks, and I'm hearing, you know, some positive, some negative, and, you know, so some people saw two people in rainbow shirts, and, you know, I know their doctrine is they're sexual one man and one woman they believe the word of god okay that god created them male and female okay so do you lose weight before going to a gym so if somebody shows up in a rainbow shirt to a revival that's who they were when they got there okay we go we see jesus and we go changed we walk away changed um that doesn't mean anything that somebody had a rainbow shirt on that has there's nothing to do with the revival at all god wants us to show up as we are he knows everything about us he knows every hair on our head or lack thereof so to me it's insulting that people are putting these things on twitter and oh the two people showed up in a rainbow shirt so what please do Please come, come as you are. Because you know what? You're already condemned if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. God is calling in these final moments before the end of the dispensation of grace. God is calling whosoever will. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe would not perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. But not all of us will because a lot of us will be the, believe the liar, believe pastors in the pulpit who tell us who God is and who he isn't. Know for yourself and seek for yourself. That is the greatest challenge right now that I'm challenging you with, to know who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ said, who do you say that I am? 
That is the most important question and answer that you will ever ask and answer yourself in this life. So, okay, so yes, we come to Jesus Christ as we are, you know, and that's a lot why a lot of people call Christians hypocrites, specifically and precisely because of that, you know, and that, that just makes me crazy. Um, and that's why they walk away from Jesus, because they can't stand his disciples. And you know what? I agree. I agree. Sorry, but I do agree. Jesus is the Savior, not us. Okay, we need to remember that. Um, it is by grace that we are saved. It's grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, so we don't walk around there boast and say, and look what I did as a Christian. And, you know, we are all the same at the cross, which is the greatest blessing of all, because I wasn't the goody two shoes of the crowd. So that's a blessing for me. Um, you know, there's just so many videos out there damning this revival. Um, I don't feel a check in my spirit personally. And, um, it is my admonition, and I, like I said, I am not a pastor, I am not a teacher, um, but I will say that I feel led to say watch and learn. God's ways are not our ways, beloved. God's ways are not our ways. They are higher than our ways. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God they are higher than our ways. Watch and learn. Pray and discern. Please. All right? Um, is it a coincidence that this same college had revival in 1970 that spread to over 100 university, universities? God inhabits the praises of his people. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Satan puts on, oh, Satan puts on a show at the Grammys, right? For five minutes. God is praised and worshipped. For eternity but I find this rather um, humorous that you know Satan is worshipped for five minutes and they actually call it worship um, in the Sam Smith or whatever the guy's name was at the Grammys um, worship for five minutes well look at God go okay look at God greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world all right. I just thought that was pretty funny. Um, America is crying out for revival, guys. And God is answering. Don't throw a damper on that. That's religious, critical spirits. Um, check yourself regardless of, you know, what you're, what you're telling yourself. Um, pray. It's God's business anyway, you know. Don't be a fruit inspector. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Weep with those who are weeping. And pray that revival spreads like wildfire in these final moments of the end of the dispensation of grace. And it's going to end soon and very soon. And we all see it. We all know it. So, yes, we want so many more to join us. God wants the bride of Christ to be complete. And when that last Gentile says yes, that's it. Father's going to say, son, it's time to go get your bride. And I'm waiting. Let's go. Have revival. Till that last Gentile says, yes. Please. Okay, so yes, we test the spirits. Feelings aren't always facts, but it's the greatest feeling, brothers and sisters, in the world to know that I once was lost and now I'm found. You know, people are talking about, oh, it's, it's all such an emotional experience over there. Hey, listen, when I came back to the Lord as a prodigal, had a $1,000 a day cocaine addiction, uh, quaalude addiction, um, I couldn't find my way out. I was born again. I was saved at 11, but I needed deliverance. And it was an emotional experience for me. And I was alone. I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop looking up at the sky, thanking God, and that I could even... Uh, appreciate the sky as it was or the beach as it was or have the ability to appreciate I was one of those 10 lepers that Jesus healed and one of the ones out of the 10 that Jesus healed only one came back to thank him and that one was a Samaritan okay not even a Jew 
So be that one leper that comes back to thank him. You know what? Because a lot of us are saved. A lot of us are born again. But we just go about our business like the other nine lepers. I need to hear his heartbeat. I need to hear his very breath. I need to hear him speaking to me. He said, my sheep hear my voice. They listen to the voice of no other. I need to hear that. You know, in those pictures of the shepherd carrying a sheep, all the other little sheep are down on the ground. I picture myself as that sheep right close to his heart where I'm hearing his heart beating because I remember being away from the meadow. I remember being away from the fold for so very long and falling off the cliff and the shepherd happened to come get me. And he came a long distance because I belong to him. And he will for any of his prodigals and all of his prodigals because he will not lose any that the father has given him. That is a promise, okay? So, you know, repentance is not a bad word. I want to say this. Repentance is not a bad word. Christianity has that word wrong. I've been to many churches and I have many sermons and I heard a lot about repentance. And let me tell you what, it's not what they preach in the pulpit. Okay, they use the word repentance against people. Okay, repentance means to change your mind. Change your mind. Because the heart is wicked above all things. We can't change our heart. You know, people think that repent is to change your heart. Repent. We don't have the ability to change our heart. You know, just like that gym metaphor that I showed you. We don't have the ability. Only the power of the Holy Spirit when he comes in, when we become born again, we become sealed Jesus said the only way to the Father is through the Son and that we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so we can't, oh, I repent for this sin and I repent for that sin. Sin is a condition. So when we get born again, we are born again and we become adopted into the Father's grace, into his family once and for all. Repentance is a change of mind about who God is. We can't change our heart. God changes our heart. So we repent and know that we don't have the ability to change our, our heart. Only God can change it. And preachers have threatened, you know, congregations by the word repent, by saying, you know, turn from your sin and repent. And remember, we don't have that power. We don't have that power to turn from our sin and change our heart. Once we change our mind about who God is and knowing who he is and seeking him for who he is, the Savior, then and only then when he comes in and seals us with the power of the Holy Spirit, who is the truth, who is the counselor, who is the guide, who is our best friend, only then can we be set apart, sanctified, and changed from glory to glory, okay? Repentance comes from two Greek words, meta, which means to change, and noia, which means mind, meta, noia. Okay, so a relationship with God is not through works. It is through grace, and grace alone. Tootsie's in the background over there, watching and waiting for our Lord. So meta means change, Noia means mind. Change your mind. Remember, you cannot change your heart. The heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? You go into these stores that say, you know, trust your heart. I trust my heart. Um, I don't trust my heart. The heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? Okay, so trust God. He speaks to us in our spirit. The heart is wicked above all things. Metanoia, change your mind. Know who the God of this universe is. Know the God who gave his life for his own creation. Know that God. Know that Jesus Christ, the only Savior of this world, who is coming back, who is seated currently at the right hand 
of the Father who is coming back to rapture his church imminently. Okay, that is the Jesus Christ I'm talking about. Okay, the Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. Okay, so that relationship with God is not through works, it's through grace. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we change our mind, metanoia, about who Jesus is, and Jesus will change your heart. Simple as that. Change your mind about how you see yourself. Repent about who you think Jesus Christ is. He gets a bad rap in life. Okay? Who do you say Jesus Christ is? Because that's the most important question that you'll ever ask yourself. And that answer, there's no greater answer. Okay? More important in your life today. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day rose again, according to scripture, for our sins. And God made it as simple as the ABCs to get born again, to come into a personal, intimate relationship with the Father. A is to simply admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. B is to believe and the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God anyway. And the Bible is the inspired, infallible word of God. And we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Simply admit that. B is to believe. And this is key. Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And see, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might be saved will be saved. That's Tootsie in the back. She loves to get under her covers and, and cuddle under every little cover. But that is the simple gospel, my friend. It's not repent for every little thing you've done. What every day when I come to the Lord, I say, Father, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. The Bible says that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. But God doesn't want us to come to him and say, oh, I did this again and I know you hate me. Change your mind about who God is. He's a God of grace. He's a God of love. He's a God of mercy. His mercy endures forever. Know who his character is. He's faithful. He's just. He's true. He will never leave you nor forsake you. A lot of us that have grown up in different, you know, uh, Families of origin, traumatic, you know, childhood backgrounds and stuff. It's difficult for us to grasp the understanding of a faithful father. My father was killed when I was 18 months old, so I didn't have any correlation to a father. Um, so, to me, it was an absent. So, with that, abandonment issues presented themselves. So... Each individual, each and every one of us individually have a different story. And God knows that story. And he wants us to become a part of his story. We are not all children of God. We are all creations of God. And until we say, I do, to Jesus Christ, we remain creations of God, not children of God. But the moment we say yes to Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior for the forgiveness of our own personal sin, we become children of God. God bless you guys. I love you. Until next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws in it. God bless you guys.